series encloses heartrending and gut-wrenching, but real encounters of people throughout the years. These writers have dug deeply inside themselves to discern what they truly believe in and then had the courage to share it with the whole world. This bravery is seen through a wide range of essayists, including people with white collar jobs, artists, athletes, parents, the known and the unknown. The two editions of this book, one in the 1950s and the other in the early 2000s, demonstrates the significance of this book as some of these short stories are written at a time where people where fear has made people afraid to think. I, this I believe series and the remarkable personal philosophies in this book reveals how our beliefs haven't really changed much since the 1950s, despite the vast changes in the context of the society. <coughs> we still believe in personal freedom, true love. We believe in democratic independence, <coughs> and more importantly, we believe in the enhancement of spiritual more than materialistic values. Us as humans, we almost always tend to find a way to relate to each other in varying degrees. The virtue I find the most alluring in my daily life <coughs> is the virtue of perseverance. This can be <coughs> reflected from the two personal philosophies I find the most appealing in this book, Leaving Identity Issues to Other Folks by Phyllis Allen and The Power of and the Power and Mystery of Naming Things by Eve Ensler. The reason being, strong perseverance requires you to face ob obstacles, discouragement of failure, and the distracting effect of temptations head on, and be steadfast on your path towards your own goal. This takes an incredible amount of courage. Brushing off verbal abuse, losing family and loved ones, or total rejection can be devastating for one's morale. It makes a road to achieve your goals and dreams an uphill battle. Leaving Identity Issues to Other Folks by Phyllis Allen exhibits perseverance towards freedom and equality. Allen describes her experience being a colored woman in the 1950s America, the frustration of speaking broken Swahili with people who had never been closer to Africa than a Tarzan movie, and considering Africa as a heritage despite her not having been to Africa, but simply because everyone said so. Despite being considered black and angry, regardless of how scared she was, she had to be brave and stand up for her rights and the rights of her people. Her motivation throughout the 50 years she describes in a short story is just a quote from her mother. She believes in being a woman, the best she can be. She reminds me of Rosa Parks, who also fought for the same cause. But instead of <coughs> refusing to give up her seat to a white man, Ellen raised her voice and called for freedom and to abolish segregation in her beat up jeans, hair like a nappy halo, and her clenched fist. The only difference is, Parks is the known and Ellen is the unknown. Her perseverance can be seen through the five decades of being discriminated and segregated but still having the dream of living in this brand new millennium with everlasting confidence to stick to a small list of beliefs that really matters. Being a good friend, lover, parent, and the best version of a woman she can ever be. The Power and Mystery of Naming Things by Eve Ensler is even more personal, using language as the duct tape to mend her life, meandering through the 20 years of depression. <laughs> She explains how she faced the deepest demons and deceptions head on by saying it often enough and loud enough in places where it was not supposed to be said. By it, she is referring to the sexual and physical violence her father has perpetrated on her as a child. Woman after woman throughout the world tells her horrendous experiences of being gang raped, beaten up by her boyfriend, molested by her stepfather, and her privacy being violated. No matter how painful these stories are, Ensla believes that the only way to lift her pain and endure the rest of her life is by accepting the fact that it happened and by talking about it. This is perseverance. Whether it is by the Taliban in Afghanistan, during the Bosnian War, or in Sri Lanka after the tsunami, women all over the world needs to empower each other 
to break the silence, breaking her isolation, making her unfortunate experience real, and allowing this to melt her shame and guilt. These women have a fear of being criticized, outcast, or disliked. But such taboos and denial needs to be fragmented by standing up for each other and continuing being a violence, sorry, being a voice against violence. What makes this story a strong example of perseverance is her bravery in opening up about her <coughs> ill-fated experience and enlightening the rest of us young women about how free it makes her feel, thus encouraging us to do the same. The inestimable courage it must have taken for her to share this story with the whole world and her lion-headedness in the struggle towards freedom for women and girls worldwide definitely makes her a protagonist. If I were to write my personal story for this I Believe book, I would surely be amongst one of these women who find motivation from remarkable women like Phyllis Allen and Eve Ensler and their strong examples of perseverance. As a young woman myself, I am unquestionably not immune to sexual harassment. It is a fact that I still cringe when I hear quotes like, a letter cannot be posted if the letterbox is not open that I know that I'm still not over my very first meet with sexual harassment, which happened when I was barely six years old. It's a fact that people still describe consensual sex as, un as exploring uncharted territory that ratifies that those women wrote about in 1950s is still very much a part of our lives in the 21st century. Firstly, this court relates sex to colonization, and secondly, colonization, no unwanted sexual attention is romantic. Especially not at an age you barely know how to do basic arithmetic problems. The setbacks of voicing my experience has changed my image, led to slut shaming, lost friends and loved ones, but this is still nothing even close to how empowered I feel to be where I am today despite the unfortunate events in my early life. Truth be told, it has been a well-kept secret for 14 years until recently, where I found myself in the company of a loving partner with whom I can accept my past, where I come from, and what has shaped me. This is my personal experience of perseverance, which will always be an important virtue of my life, and this is what I would write about if I ever get the chance. I believe in myself. Thank you.